hey, it's Hawks and Rock Hard Training Cars and Upgraded Shooter. And everybody's heard that you should have slow, gentle pressure on the trigger until you get a surprise break. Well, what if you don't have time for that? How fast can you press the trigger without disturbing the sights? What I've got for you today is a drill that will answer that question for you. It will tell you how quickly you can press the trigger in certain situations. If you need a lot of accuracy, your trigger press is probably going to be different than if you just need to hit something big like a car or the side of a building or the side of a barn. But what this will do is it will give you your performance envelope and it will baseline you so that you know what you're working from. It will let you know where you're at so that you know whether you're improving over time and what you need to work on. So here's what we're going to do. I'm about five yards from the target. I'm going to shoot one shot where I do the surprise break of the trigger. It'll be painfully long on video. Then what I'm going to do is use a shot timer and see how quickly I can press the trigger and still have an acceptable level of accuracy. And for this drill at this range, I'm going to go for about a tennis ball size group. And as you can see, I've got a camera in front of the target there, so we'll be able to see both at the same time. You'll be able to see me shooting, and you'll be able to see where the bullet's going. So let's do it. First, with the surprise break. Twelve o'clock in the bullseye. Good to go with that. All right, now I'm going to do the shot timer and see how quickly I can press the trigger with the slack taken up on the trigger. Point one nine seconds, and the uh, hit basically in the same spot. Now I'm going to do it with uh, touching the trigger, but without taking up the slack. That one was a little bit low, and it kind of makes sense. The, the longer time you have to articulate the finger, the more likely it is that you're going to get sympathetic movement from the other fingers or the wrist. So this time what I'm going to do is start from an index position and see how long that takes. That was 0.54 seconds, almost half a second to go from here to the trigger and pressing the trigger. Now what I'm going to do is touch the front of the trigger guard and just slap my finger back and see if I can do it without disturbing the sights. And it's about it was 0.26 seconds and a little bit off but still within that tennis ball size group. So, uh, what you want to do with this is you're probably going to want to shoot more than one shot per iteration, but you want to find out your performance envelope. You want to find out how quickly can you press that trigger before your performance drops off to an unacceptable level. How quickly can you press the trigger before you start getting sympathetic movement from your other fingers or from your wrist. And then once you know what that feels like, you can execute at that speed on demand. And you'll be able to dial in your accuracy depending on the demands of the situation. Now, what can you do to improve it? I go into a, a lot of trigger isolation drills and upgraded shooter, and uh, there's finger waves that you can do, there's coin rolling, and there are ways to activate the joints between the hand and the brain so that you get optimal sensory input from the fingers to the brain and optimal motor output from the brain to the finger so that you're able to isolate that trigger finger and make it run that trigger as fast as you need it to run without disturbing accuracy. So I'm going to go into more drills like this that you can do at a range that have time limitations where you can only uh, shoot one round per second or one round every other second and where you can't do anything tactical even uh, even reloads uh, in a tactical manner 
and we're going to do that over an upgraded shooter. And but this is going to be one of the the easiest drills that you can do next time you go to the range. You can make the dot on the paper with a sharpie. You can use a sticker, or you can use uh, our brain-based diagnostic targets. But uh, either way, go ahead and try this drill next time you go to the range and find out what your performance envelope is. Um, one thing to keep in mind, this isn't a reaction drill. This isn't how quickly can you react and shoot. And one of the reasons for that is you're going to be able to react and shoot at a faster speed than you can see and shoot. And what happens is the, the complexity of visual processing, uh, it's, it, it's not as uh, black and white as hearing a beep and boom going. The other thing is, depending on what hearing protection you use, there may be a lag time in the signal processing. Um, mine has microphones on the outside of the muffs and speakers on the inside of the muffs, and I haven't detected a perceptible lag. But it could happen with some, with some uh, earphones that have volume adjustments. So just keep that in mind. But that's all for now. Um, if you are looking for high-speed dry fire training to take your shooting to the next level, I want to encourage you to go over to dryfiretrainingcards.com. And if you're looking for uh, looking to go deeper down the rabbit hole, uh, looking to dive into accelerated learning techniques, how to get how to improve your sensory input of your of your hands and fingers and motor output from your brain to your hands so that you can shoot faster and more accurately and go into stress modulation, upregulating the speed that the visual cortex can process visual images. Uh, I want you to head on over to UpgradedShooter.com and check out the, the training program that we have there that will take you way beyond what you even knew was possible and help you improve in areas that you didn't even know you could improve in. So that's it for today. Take care.